everyone, welcome to Oni Sings Voice Detective. I basically decided that I wanted to jump on a trend that's several years old. Back in the day, I wanna say maybe like two years ago or so, uh, a lot of YouTubers decided to do the 30 day YouTube challenge. And I thought that this might be something helpful for my channel as well. It is quite the challenge and we shall see. If this part is in the video, then I am still planning on doing the challenge. What that entails is one video a day. And I decided the easiest way for me to do this would be a series to make it a very specific thing. And we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna learn a lot and hopefully you all will too. Let's go, feel free to like and subscribe. Today's case, why do I keep losing my voice? So today's video, I'm just gonna hit on four of the main causes I notice when it comes to voice loss. First, vocal fatigue. Now vocal fatigue usually feels like you're working harder than you usually have to to produce sound, whether it's singing or speaking. When you're dealing with fatigue, you usually have a higher PTP. And PTP, if you remember from our previous video, is phonation threshold pressure. That's the amount of subglottal air it takes to create sound, to get your vocal folds to vibrate and phonate. When you have to use more pressure, the PTP is higher. And when the PTP is higher, you're making more of an effort to create sound. The main causes I find when it comes to vocal fatigue are usually illness. Oftentimes the vocal folds will be swollen because of some sort of illness or allergies or what have you. Overuse is another cause, basically using your voice too much, asking too much of your poor little vocal folds. Or poor technique, not using enough breath energy, not placing the sound well, and a myriad of other things that can make singing more difficult, but also might damage your vocal folds. Another reason you might be losing your voice a lot is misuse. Now here are three types of misuse. Number one, not using enough breath. Again, we need as much breath energy as possible to allow our vocal folds to vibrate. Number two, violent voicing. Now, what is violent voicing? It's using your voice violently. Some examples of violent voicing, shouting, screaming, yelling, constant throat clearing. And number three, affecting your tone can also be a type of misuse. Basically, you're creating a voice that is not your own, and so your body has to do other things outside of what it does naturally to create that sound. Usually that incorporates some amount of tension. We wanna do our best to sing freely with no tension. And if you wanna learn more about the harms of affecting your voice, I have another video that you can feel free to check out. And lastly, another possible reason for consistent vocal loss health issues. Some health issues include dehydration, and I know that might sound like that's not really a health issue, but it is. If you are not staying hydrated regularly throughout your day and throughout your days, plural, then yes, you put yourself in a position to possibly create the opportunity for damage because you are not staying hydrated and your voice is working from dryness which is incredibly dangerous for your vocal folds. Poor environment can also be considered a health issue. If you are in a place that doesn't help you breathe well, doesn't help you produce sound well. For instance, if you're dealing with a place that has a lot of allergens, if you're in a place that has a lot of pollution, if where you are is very dry and you don't have a lot of moisture in the air, these things can then lead to difficulty with your vocal folds and difficulty with speaking and singing. Another health issue that probably goes without saying, but any sinus illness illnesses can also get in the way of you being able to produce sound easily. One of the biggest health issues that a lot of singers have that is very specific to singers, I've talked about this plenty in other videos, but I'll bring it up again, is LPR, laryngopharyngeal reflux. Basically, reflux that comes up into your larynx and your pharynx. So those two places are the two places where we resonate sound. It's basically where we make sound. And so if you have acid reflux, acid going up into your throat and basically up towards your nasal passages, that will also cause inflammation and make it very difficult to sing, to speak, and over time can cause very serious damage. So if you are somebody that has a lot of acid reflux and you're also a singer, I would look into seeing an ENT and ask them about LPR. And of course, vocal dysfunction can also cause voice loss. Some common forms of dysfunction, laryngitis, which is inflammation of the larynx, nodules, which are the singer's nightmare. Nodules are calluses that form on your vocal folds. And one type of dysfunction I'm unfortunately very familiar with, hemorrhaging, which is in essence bleeding folds when you are bleeding on your vocal folds. And if you wanna know more about my journey with overcoming that trauma, feel free to click this video. 
Moving right along, let's talk about some tips to keep you safe and keep your voice healthy. I'm gonna say it again, hydrate, 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 drink water. Another kind of, of course, but I'm still gonna say it, don't sing when you're sick. And I know that sounds like I'm scolding you and I feel like I kind of want to. <laughs> don't sing when you're sick. So many singers sing sick. Unfortunately, because if we do this for a living, if this is our profession, then choosing not to sing when you're sick might cost you money, might cost you an income. And so I do understand that. However, if you want to be able to continue to use your voice for the length of your career, then yes, please take time off sometimes. Of course, if you take voice lessons, you'll learn ways of handling your voice so that you can kind of work with it even when it's ill and be healthy to some extent. But still, even with that knowledge, even with the knowledge that I have, I have to remember if I can get away with not singing when I'm sick, let us not sing sick. Another thing that'll help you stay healthy vocally is staying healthy bodily. So as long as you're taking care of yourself, then your voice also will be taken care of. So that'll do it for today's case. I think we've solved the case and hopefully you've gotten some information and a little more understanding of your own voice. And hopefully it encourages you to want to take care of yourself and take care of your voice. Your voice is so valuable. See you at the next investigation. Feel free to like and subscribe. Bye. If I at least had like a magnifying glass. Yeah, I need to get a prop so that I can do the magnifying glass. I mean, I used to have the um, fedora, and my fedora would have been perfect for this. Maybe I'll get a fedora. Am I about to spend money on a fedora and a magnifying glass? <laughs> Am I? <laughs> okay, that's the.